If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, rangers, hunters, woods people, and the like. Have you had any creepy slash weird encounters in the woods? Missing 411, portals, lost time, spook lights, stairs in the woods, etc. On a night in 2006 or 2007, I noticed a campfire in the distance, and I went to investigate as setting up camps in this area was not allowed as conservation efforts were in place. I walked over, no one was here, and I wondered why idiots would let a fire go unattended. So I went over there, there were about two tents, from what I remember, and no one was there. I radioed in and asked for a couple of guys to come to clean up. When they arrived, I went to look for any signs that people were around. I looked around for a couple of minutes and didn't find anything. Then we all left after extinguishing the fire and clearing up. We had one guy stay there as we had unattended equipment. Then I went back to the office, I was due a break. After the break, I went out and saw a group of three who seemed fairly distressed. I approached them and asked them what they were doing down this neck of the woods, and they said that they were camping and had been told to leave their campsite immediately. I became suspicious as we had no rangers working there. I asked them who they saw, and they said that he was wearing very old-fashioned clothes and that he supposedly had no face. At this point, shivers were sent down my spine. I told them to go and collect their equipment, and they went to get their equipment, then I saw them leaving. I have only mentioned this to my friend, who has worked in the park since 2006. He hasn't had any reports of such things up to this day. This is one of my scariest stories. I still have no clue what happened, but when hearing that in the dark and in the middle of the woods, shivers were sent down my spine. I was grouse hunting last week, and I went into the forest off of a logging road in knee-deep snow. I went straight back for about 20 minutes, I could see my footprints behind me, and I checked in with my partner, whom I kept on my right every couple of minutes. All of a sudden, I saw a road up ahead in a place where there was no road. I walked out 10 feet from where I went in, and my friend was on my left. Normally, I would think I just got turned around, but I brought it up to my dad and my brother, we have all been navigating that part of the forest for almost 30 years. They had both had the exact same thing happen at different times of the year at roughly the same spot. Our property is an old logged out area, they replanted a bunch of cedar trees, and they are pretty uniform. A couple hundred yards back, it goes to a national forest that is virtually untouched. I've had other weird experiences in that part of our back lot, but this one was super weird. I never crossed over my own footprints, and while I veered left and right, there's no way I could have pulled a 180 the way I did. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. This is not my own encounter, but that of a friend that I thought was fairly intriguing. My friend lived on a farm in one of those worker houses because he wasn't exactly the most financially stable person. And his dog Blue decided to run all the way down the dirt road, so my friend chased it. He couldn't catch the dog, and it beat him to his house after they had already reached the end of the road. So this left my friend alone on the road, next to two huge pastures on both sides. It was about 6 p.m., according to him. When he was walking back home, he turned to one of the pastures. And stared at what seemed like a glowing door. Just alone in the pasture. It was pitch black everywhere else. He told me that he didn't understand why, but he just couldn't resist the urge to get closer and stare at the door. It didn't make a sound. It didn't move. And when he blinks, it's gone. When he finally returned home, it was 7.30 p.m. He had been out there for an hour and a half, and it seemed like time had skipped a beat. He called it. The Dev Room. In Finland, we have a myth and, by some, a personally observed phenomenon called Metsenpeto. A literal translation would be, a forest cover. It is described as a place, or a state, into which a person or pet traveling in nature can end. A person who experiences Metsenpeto will usually be walking in the woods and will suddenly experience a strange feeling of stillness, which some have called comforting but most scary. They will notice that the area surrounding them has suddenly changed into something foreign, and they become lost. Previous landmarks like roads, stones, trees, or hills will have disappeared or changed. This is said to be frightening, as people who claim to have experienced Metsenpeto usually do so in forests they know very well and have walked in many times before. The noises of the forest will completely disappear, and bird songs will be gone. Many describe the sky changing color slightly or the sun shining from a different direction. What's more, no one else can find them or hear their voice, even if they're close by. According to the myth, some people, when experiencing this, cannot move. Some turn into tree stumps or rocks. Others simply wander, lost. Some people get out of this state naturally on their own, finding home. Others employ trickery, such as turning a piece of clothing inside out or looking between their legs. 
Some other methods, like pouring water on footprints or saying spells, are said to help rescue someone from Metzenpedo. This used to be one of the responsibilities of shamans. Traditionally, Metzenpedo is explained as being the realm of the forest spirits, elves, and or fairies. It has been thought to be a curse, cast as revenge for something, perhaps disrespect, though I've read someone interpret it as a blessing, potentially helping someone in need of shelter to hide. I moved to my current residence with my family years ago. I was around 12 and excited to settle into a new place. The house was new when we moved in, it was only 7 years old, and there were never any accidents in it or the large backyard. On the border of the backyard was a government-owned forest that you could walk through with trails. Our house had a pathway that led down into the forest. Me and my brothers were excited to go there, so a few days after settling in, our dad took us out. The whole hike was normal until we started coming back through the access that was made by the previous owners. When I was going through, I took a wrong turn where the path split. We were near the exit to our property, but I came upon a split and took the wrong path. I walked a short distance to where our property should be, but it wasn't there. I just looked forward and saw a field of sunflowers. The field of sunflowers must have been large because I could not see a tree line behind it. The field didn't make sense, it was located around where the property would start and seemed to be massive. My dad realized I was gone and called me back. The times I went through the woods, I did not see the split in the path. Somewhat recently, I went through the woods with my brothers, and I accidentally, without realizing it, went through the split and found an empty field with no sunflowers. Both occurrences where I went through the split took place in the summer. This particular event happened to me when I was around 10 or 11 years old, but I have been visiting my grandma's cabin in Big Bear Lake several times a year ever since I was a child. My grandma's cabin sits at the end of a cul-de-sac, right at the edge of a vast, mostly unpopulated, aside from a few other cabins, stretch of forest. Me, my dad, and my uncle were walking on a trail that we've been on hundreds of times before when we reached the first peak of the hill that we usually like to stop and look out at the view from. My dad and uncle wanted to keep hiking for a bit, but I decided to go back to the cabin on my own, as it was only 5 to 10 minutes away. I head down the usual path that I go on, not thinking too much about it, when I realize that I have no idea where I am. Everything looked the same as usual, but something was wrong. The normal path was different in a way I can't really explain. It seemed to be 10x as long as usual, everything was silent, and there was absolutely no wildlife around me, not even a squirrel. I kept having all of these morbid thoughts coming into my head about how I was lost forever or how some sort of creature was going to swoop me up. Every 10 minutes or so, I'd end up at a part of the trail that I definitely recognized, only to be in a completely alien area moments later. The path kept winding and winding downhill, and the sun was setting pretty rapidly. I had to have been walking in the direction of the cabin for more than an hour because, as I remember, I kept checking my watch and panicking. At this point, I just accepted that I was lost. I finally made it down to the street and was relieved to be able to orient myself, but it was only one street away from the cabin, although I should have been much further away. I was expecting my father and uncle to be home by now and for my parents to be worried about me being gone so long, but instead my mom asked me why I came back so soon. I asked my dad how long they were out as well, and they said they only walked maybe 15 minutes longer from when I left them. As a young child, my sister was visited by a spirit that appeared as a gnome-type creature, small, gray beard and pointed hat. He always appeared at dusk, and he tried to get her to follow him into the woods. My sister barely remembers the episodes, but I remember her telling me about them and even remember once keeping her from following him into the woods. My mom remembers once when we were swimming in a neighbor's pool and she came to bring us home for dinner. After being home for about five minutes, my mom realized my sister was gone. Instinctively, she ran back to the swimming pool and found her in the pool, alone, she was three and could barely swim. We think this also has something to do with that entity, as she could not have walked that far in that amount of time by herself. Has anyone ever heard of an entity that tries to lure children away? My grandparents own a wooded lot. They don't have too much wood, but just enough that you could get lost if you weren't paying attention. I've walked around in them pretty much my whole life, but that all changed recently. Around Easter, I was walking into the woods, almost out of view from their house, when I stumbled upon a staircase. The staircase looked untouched. It seemed to have not been affected by nature, yet it still looked old. As I got closer, everything around me got quieter. This pretty much told me it was time to leave. I sprinted back to their house, but for some reason it felt like I was running for 30 minutes when I really should have only been 5 to 10 minutes away. I went back to see if the staircase was still there, but couldn't find it no matter how hard I checked. It's not a huge deal, but I'm a little shaken. 
There are these woods. I go to my living partner, and with this one part, I always feel great tension. Almost every time we pass that part of the woods, something strange happens. One time I heard demonic-like voices, and part of it was whispered directly into my ear. Right after that, my so immediately said, let's get out of here, and he isn't the type to get scared. Other times, we felt like we were being watched or followed near that location. A few hours ago, he saw a really big white thing. I didn't see it, but when I walked to the center of the activity, I got heart palpitations. I moved a few feet away, and it stopped. He said it was a big and formless white thing that jumped away into the trees. I didn't see anything move, but if anything had jumped into the bushes, it would have been audible, and twigs would have moved. The whole way home, he had a look on his face like he was trying to manage what he saw. I really wonder if there's a portal there, or maybe it's just a hotspot of activity. Either way, there's something strange about this spot in these woods, and it part proves to me that there's much more to the world than we can see. Some background. I'm a 37-year-old female, and he is a male. We are urban explorers and hikers and sometimes go into abandoned buildings, even in ones said to be haunted, we never felt or saw anything, not even in abandoned psych wards. These woods are where we go hiking. I was hiking with my friend in East Texas. He has indigenous blood in him, so he's very sensitive to spirits. Anyway, we were a mile and a half into this trail deep in the woods. It's Tuesday around noon, so this state park is empty. I start seeing shadows of animals, I'm assuming, first a white furry animal to my left, then a large black shadow, knee height, of what looked like a boar in front of me. I told my friend, and he said, oh, that's weird. We walk a couple more steps, he says he sees a person ahead, but there's no one there. We brush it off, whatever. Maybe our eyes are playing tricks on us. Then, all of a sudden, the air around us starts feeling super heavy and dark. Both of our chests start feeling tight, and there's pressure in the air. We both start hearing the voices of people chattering on the other side of the wall of trees to our left. I was assuming it was a campsite because this park has so many campsites everywhere. We turn the corner of the trees, and no one is there. We both looked at each other and said our own protective prayers, and we kind of booked it out of there as fast as we could. It felt like we stepped into a dark curtain or a portal of some sort, because when we passed a little river or creek, everything felt lighter and weight was lifted off our chests, and we had to stop to breathe and reassess what just happened. I'm a child of the mountains, and my hometown was completely mountainous, so I spent most of my childhood running through the forests and stuff, and one event that happened when I was 10 kind of remains unexplained. I was on top of the ridge several hundred feet above my house when I started hearing my biological father yelling. In our very redneck area, he had a very distinctive voice with no accent, so it's really not possible to confuse him for anybody else. His voice was coming from the other side of the ridge, which is a bit weird in retrospect because nobody lived over that way and everybody avoided that area. Even when hunting, we'd go around because the terrain was just too bad to deal with, lots of thick brush and sudden drops. I started hearing him calling my name, so I started to go down anyway. It's not a good area, but I've been through it a time or two during the winter, when less vegetation means easier navigation. The voice wasn't really getting closer, but it was getting louder. And then this feeling of dread washed over me as I suddenly remembered my father was on a business trip to Germany. I've never run so fast. I didn't realize it until I got to the other side of the ridge, but the forest had been completely silent on the other side of the ridge, which never happens unless there's a predator around or the wind picks up. Normally, I'd think I was just getting close to black bear territory or something, but the voice obviously makes it confusing. But unlike a number of stories like this I've heard over the years, the experience didn't really stop me from going into the woods and made me more curious about the other side of the ridge, resulting in occasional expeditions into it, though I never heard or saw anything else, and eventually the mountain itself was destroyed for a new highway, probably around 2008, eight-ish years later, going right through the center of the place where the voice was coming from. This happened in the early fall, around three years ago. Me and a friend of mine decided to go down to the water and check out a small boat that had run ashore and was left abandoned. We walked to the boat around 9 p.m., and it was nothing special, nothing on board, nothing interesting about it, so we decided to keep walking down the trail the boat was on. The trail is lined with tall grass, 5 to 8 feet high, on both sides. Forward, the trail curved, and you could not see ahead more than 20 feet or so. As we walked around the curve, we noticed something walk out of the tall grass, maybe 15 feet ahead on the right, and cross into the tall grass on the left. It is hard to describe what I saw, but it looked like a torso with legs and a head, completely white, no other extremities, probably about 5 feet tall. It just casually walked across our path, not noticing us, 
right into the tall grass. My friend was noticeably shook up, and so was I, but I simply wrote it off as the moonlight illuminating a deer, oddly. She accepted that answer, and we walked back to my car. Afterwards, we saw some deer hanging out in the grass a few miles away, and we both agreed that what we witnessed was no deer. It turns out a guy was found dead along the water a week or two prior to my sighting. I'm not the biggest believer in spirits, but it would make sense to me. I've gone back with a group of people, hoping to see something again, but I never have. Everyone I tell writes it off as a joke, calling it the waking legs. When I was in boot camp, I had to get a job. This job consisted of waking up in the middle of the night for an hour and cleaning the bathroom. I remember this as the day of what happened next. I was cleaning the mirrors with Windex, then moved on to cleaning the sink. As I was cleaning the sink, I saw myself in the reflection at the tip of the faucet. Then, above my head, I saw a black portal open in the ceiling that seemed pitch black and void. Out of the hole, a four-legged creature that was crawling on the seal climbed out of it and walked a little bit away from it. As it was walking away, the portal behind it closed, and a new one opened. This whole event happened in a matter of seconds while I just kept looking at the reflection and saying, WTF to myself? As I looked up, nothing was there. Was this just a hallucination? I wasn't sleep deprived and felt well rested. Since I was a little girl, I was always fascinated with the stories of the little people. Said to be as tall as the height of an average person, foot to knee, most native tribes have a variation of the little people in their oral histories. The little people are mischievous, first of all, they enjoy lurking unseen and like to play tricks on people. They are guardians of the woods. Some Anishinaabe people who camp in the woods will leave out shiny things, sweets, and little tools as an offering. Little people adore human children and have been said to find missing children in the woods. Since they are fascinated, they will insist that you play with them before they see you out of the woods safely. My favorite one was told to me by my other and alarmed parent showed up one morning on my grandparents' small farm. His daughter, a friend of my mother's, had gone missing. The whole community met at the last place she was seen and began combing the area. No one could even find a trace of the little girl. As dusk approached, fear began spreading. This was on a reserve in the 1950s, street lights would not come for some time yet. Suddenly, one volunteer heard little feet and branching snapping coming from the woods. Out came the little girl, skipping happily. Her parents were found and came to see her. She swore she had only been gone for about 15 minutes. She was with the little ones in the woods, and she played with them for a little while. Then they told her it was time to go home, and they brought her to the edge of the woods. It appears that their time goes much slower than ours. I had the opportunity to meet my mother's friend, and she told me the story as well. She said she was not afraid of them, and they had a lot of fun. I encountered something with my then boyfriend, 25, in the woods a few years ago. We were on a road trip down and up the west coast, and I wanted to stop to drink from my favorite cold spring in the Umpqua National Forest. It was getting dark, but we were on a bit of a time crunch as I had a flight from Seattle in a few days, and I'm a very experienced hiker and camper, so I wasn't super concerned. This was early March, so there was also about three feet of snow on the ground, and we had to park the car a little further and hike a little more into the springs. When we got close to where they were, it was getting very dark. I had a headlamp, but it was hard to find the proper trail in the dark and snow, and we ended up at the top of the spring rather than the bottom. My boyfriend, bless his heart, started trying to hang over the side of the icy cliff with my water bottle despite my protests. I basically yelled and said I was calling it, this was too difficult, and some good water wasn't worth the potential to get hurt or lost in frozen woods. We had a bit more difficulty navigating back out, as it was pitch black at this point. As we were hiking off trails back in the direction of the road, I was climbing over a fallen tree when I saw it. Standing what must have been nine feet tall on the fallen tree with me was some sort of thin, hooded figure holding its hands together and facing me directly. I was immediately filled with a sense of dread. As horrible as it is, I'm used to seeing things like this. I simply called my boyfriend and said, we have to move faster and get out of here now. We got back to the road, and the entire way I felt like we were being followed just beyond where I could see, in the dark. I was basically power walking down the road in the snow, terrified, and my poor boyfriend was confused and irritated. We made it back safely. I apologized for scaring, confusing, and becoming so short with him, and I shoved that experience far into the back of my head until I remembered it recently. What was that thing? I study folklore as a hobby but have no idea what that was and can't find any answers when looking into the area. I just work for a county park, but I get there before the sunrise, and I've definitely been weirded out once or twice. First off, 
possums, raccoons, foxes, and coyotes all make a variety of peculiar noises, many of which I was not previously familiar with. Some sound like demons, some sound like crying children, and some are just kind of their own thing and defy immediate description. The only creepy thing I've ever seen were lights in the woods. It's hard to tell how far away they are, I would guess 300 to 400 meters, but it's dark. They're a yellowish sort of white and appear to quickly and smoothly fade on and off in the span of about a second. I've only ever seen one light at a time, and after it happens, there are no repeats. It's too bright to be a firefly, not bright enough to be a distant car, and too smooth and random to be someone with a flashlight. My imagination has drifted to stories of will-o'-wisps, but I think it's probably just some kind of bioluminescence or else an optical illusion brought about by squinting to see through a darkened forest. I worked for the park service for seven years. For one winter, I was stationed down in Kalalik at Olympic National Park. I was one of only three employees who had full-time employment during this time. I lived on the premises in a small apartment and would often walk over to the main building at night to work out at the gym. It was always empty at this time, nobody else stayed or lived there during the weekend. When I was done, I would make my rounds and ensure all the lights were out and the doors were locked. Outside one of the bunkhouses was an unfinished shed that had an overhead light on it. The control for the light was inside the shed and locked. I would turn that light off almost every night, only to find it on in the morning, without fail. It wasn't on a timer. Nobody else was around who had access. I've spent my whole life working in the woods, I'm completely at home when outside in the dark. I could not walk from my apartment to the main building at night without wanting to run every single time. Random employees would come to the bunkhouse throughout the winter to stay the night on weekdays while on assignment. Numerous employees complained of bumps in the night and odd noises. Some refused to stay on the second floor entirely. One man even saw an apparition disappear through the wall of his room and refused to stay there any longer. All came to me with their stories, unprompted, throughout the winter. Several friends of mine went to Big Bend National Park out in Texas several years ago and had an experience where they all saw an orb floating around, clearly defined, during the day. It didn't quickly vanish either, they saw it for several minutes, and it appeared to be interested in them. Anyway, I was talking to this friend the other day after a while, and he said he and a different group went back to Big Bend and had yet another experience, this time seeing three orbs. Full disclosure, they were on mushrooms. However, they all saw the same thing, and my friend swears he's never actually seen something that wasn't there while on mushrooms. He's always viewed being on mushrooms as more of a spiritual experience, and he thinks the mindset may have been necessary for the encounters. I completely believe him, but I haven't seen anything online where others have had a similar experience. I have been a park ranger for 11 years. I am not going to say where I work, but it is a very large park. This story took place in the spring of 2008. The park that I worked at had a very big drinking problem with youths trespassing all the time. We had calls almost every night, I worked nights most of my career. One day, a member of the public who was camping called in, saying that there was a large group of youths making noise and drinking. I was dispatched and started walking over in the dark. I tried to sneak up, this was a breach of my standard operating procedure, to try to apprehend as many as I could. I managed to apprehend four to five, don't clearly remember, and all the others ran into the woods. My prediction was that there were as many as 20 people, based on what I saw. I radioed through to dispatch to get a couple of deputies out here to take over. Deputies arrived at this point. I was all alone in the middle of nowhere. I radioed through to try to get guided back to the more civilized part of the woods. At this point, I had already walked quite far, and the radio connection was breaking up, we had bad radios back then. As I approached a part of the woods, I felt similar. I looked behind me and saw someone walking up to me very slowly. I then called out, hello. There was no response. At this point, radio contact was back, and I radioed in, saying that I had spotted someone. At this point, the figure is maybe 40 meters away. I then called out stop and are you okay? With no response. As the figure came closer, it just disappeared. I couldn't make out what it was. The next day was a normal day, as mentioned to my friend, who had worked here for 10 years. I mentioned what happened, and he made a scared face and said, it's nothing. He got up and walked away. In 2013, I left to work at the sheriff's office and never mentioned it to anyone except some close friends while drunk. I live in Southwest Virginia, and I'm pretty skeptical about stuff, but this I cannot deny. So I'd be out in the woods near my house with some of my buddies, and we always had a good time, but I'll never forget the nights we saw this thing. It's a tall, bulky, light gray, hunched over, maybe damn near nine foot tall, bipedal figure. 
The first time I'd seen it, we were out riding our four wheelers and shit when I saw something pretty large pass by the path behind us, I was on the back rack facing backwards. I scratched it off as some kind of wild life around here, because there's loads of it out here. Eventually we'd made it to our campsite and settled down. Nice fire going, real bright. Then we kept hearing SHT around us and felt like we were being watched. I grabbed my flashlight and shined it around outside the firelight. After some scanning, there was nothing, so we brushed it off as a possum. Then I got the bright idea to shine it roughly 50 yards out past an old, broken down tanker near us, and there it was. From the bushes, we'd seen a pair of silver, gleaming eyes just locked onto us. So we panicked, hopped on our rides, and booked out there. One night, me and my other buddy went out just searching around for a new campsite for us. We eventually wound up in an old junkyard, where there was an old, shut-down coal mine. We found a really nice spot, and it wasn't far from our old one at all. We set some stuff up to mark where we were for the rest of us when we heard a big, loud bang and an old car door slamming. It spooked us pretty good, so we set up the marks, packed up, and boogied on out of there. We were nearly out when I saw those damn unforgettable eyes, maybe 70-ish yards out. We picked up the paces and eventually got back to a gate on the main road, and as we hopped that gate, we'd heard a god-awful groan maybe 20 yards out, and it shivered our spines. Another day I was out on my porch alone, just taking in the night air, when I saw the brush moving. And I yet again brushed it off. But I heard that damn groan again, and my hair stood up like I had 20 million volts through me. I hollered at it, and it just went flying through that brush. Then the last time I'd run into it was the worst. I was by myself looking for my phone, I'd lost it near our campsite. I had my bright light and my old 9mm with me. I got to an old, broken down work truck where I'd had it last, and I thank god I found it. I saw a deer run through the path in front of me, just running up the path behind me. So I made it to a clear spot and did a little scan of the field behind me. I saw the glow of a deer's eyes and thought nothing of it. But then things slowly got up to nearly 10 feet tall. I took a few shots at it because I was scared, damn deer to death. Once eyes started chasing me at that same height, they stood up. I booked on out of that shithole and haven't been back since. My family had always told me stories of these mountains, and I never believed them up until now. I remember a while back, my old uncle was telling me about these things people see and that there's been a family of them here for decades. This happened when I was about 7 years old, according to my uncle. He's no longer with us, and I want to share his story. Growing up, I lived in northern Michigan on 5,000 acres of farm and ranch land that backed up into state land. Nothing but miles of forest and pasture could be seen. Needless to say, it made us pretty tough, and it takes a lot to spook us. We are all avid hunters, fishermen, and outdoorsmen. Being the only girl, I was raised as a tomboy, and I'm just the same. My uncle went off to join the military, becoming a senior NCO in a prominent special forces division of the US Navy. He was 6 feet 4 inches, built like a wrestler, obviously skilled in survival tactics, and nothing rattled him. He was home on leave and went out hunting as it was deer season. I remember him coming into the house shaking and crying, saying he saw something in the woods. My uncle never cried. He was tough as nails and would tear someone to shreds before he let them make him cry. My grandmother tried to get him to make sense, but he kept saying he saw Bigfoot mixed with a wolf. My granny immediately got my grandfather, and he rounded up the rest of the guys hunting my dad, a few male cousins, and my uncle, who was still terrified but went because he didn't want to be labeled a chicken, got all their shotguns and ammunition, and saddled the horses to go clear the woods. Apparently they were aware of the dogman, but I was blissfully young and ignorant. They told me to stay inside, and for no reason was I to step outside of our house until they returned. I had never heard my dad or grandfather so serious, so I hid in my room. Sunset comes, and they still aren't back. I'm really worried at this point because they never stayed in the woods until after dark. Shortly, I heard the sound of the horses running to the barn and their voices. I was so relieved. They looked troubled when they came into the house but didn't say anything, probably to not spook me. At dinner, my dad laid down the law, I was no longer allowed to play outside or go to the barns alone. I had to have my grandfather with me at all times. Of course, I was upset by this and felt my independence was being taken away, but I obeyed. The next morning, my dad and grandfather taught me how to shoot. I knew it was serious, I overheard the adults talking the next night. Apparently there were tracks where my uncle had his sighting bigger than any wolf could make, but they were definitely dog tracks. As I said before, as avid outdoorsmen and hunters, we can identify tracks easily, but these couldn't be identified. About 8 feet up in a tree were claw marks. No me bear could make those. 
We also found claw marks of about the same height on multiple trees throughout our property. Cattle were mutilated, not in the way a coyote or bear would, and it lasted that whole winter. We lost about 30 to 40 cattle that winter, all of them mutilated. All with the same wolf or dog tracks in the snow. I really feel like this experience changed my uncle. After that experience, though, he was never the same. He went from never drinking to never seeing him without a bottle of Jack, and his eyes were always haunted. He changed his personality and never went out in the woods again. He quit hunting, and he eventually just quit coming home to visit on leave. He didn't even come home for my dad's funeral two years later. It was heartbreaking to see him deteriorate the way he did. I truly believe he saw something out there, and it ultimately killed him. One night, I was hanging out with my aunt and uncle when they randomly asked me if I believed in Bigfoot. I said, I do not, but I had an experience I certainly can't explain away. My buddy and I were passing through rural McKean County, Pennsylvania, in the Appalachian foothills after spending time in my family's hunting cabin in neighboring Potter County. I was telling my buddy about McKean County's main tourist draw, the Kinswa Bridge, once the world's tallest railroad bridge. Even though it was fast approaching midnight, my friend wanted to do some good old-fashioned trespassing to check it out. So did I. Being late at night and in the middle of nowhere, there wasn't a soul around. We hopped over their laughable security apparatus, a rented chain-link fence that wouldn't deter an eight-year-old. It's close to a full moon, and we're now a hundred feet or so above the valley floor on what's left of the former monolith. We're doing the stupid teenage-slash-young 20s BS us guys do, leaning over the edge where there used to be hundreds more feet of tracks, spitting off the edge, pissing off the edge. You know all the prerequisites. After we grew bored of that, we began to rip off chunks of railroad ties. It was scary how easy it was to do this to something that had very recently had trains running on it. Naturally, the only course of action was to throw these huge chunks of wood off the bridge and make some noise. We chuckled at the chunks, and when they hit the ground, it made some noise. But, oh my lord Jesus, the sound and the scream that came right after that will forever stick out in my mind. Outside of it being incredibly loud and urine-inducing, the best I can do is tell you it sounded half primate and half industrial machinery, like metal screeching while hydraulics hiss. Then, whatever it was, we spooked or pissed off and started sprinting away through the forest below. Mind you, it was a full moon, and at that hour we had good illumination. We could see sizable trees bending at absurd angles by something with an insane amount of size, weight, and strength. Even its footsteps made a ruckus among its primate-like grunts. Sadly, we weren't lucky enough to catch a glimpse of the beast through the dense forest canopy. Listen, I've seen a handful of black bears running in the wild. None of them made anywhere near that much noise while sprinting away. I was fortunate enough to visit South Africa once and saw a rhino sprinting through the safari just a few feet away from our jeep. Again, I say, a rhino spray didn't even come remotely close to making that much noise. Nothing compares. Whatever it was, it had to be colossal. When I got back to my home in central Ohio, I scoured the net for recordings of bear and mountain lion calls. Nope. Nothing sounded remotely like the scream we heard. I have yet to hear anything like it in the dozens of animal documentaries I've watched or on a handful of remote camping trips. Once I concluded my story, my aunt and uncle's jaws were on the floor. I asked them what was up. As it turns out, there was some Bigfoot show on at the time, and they had just seen an episode that took place at the Kinswa Bridge. I didn't even know about the show's existence and had never seen or heard of the episode. Neither had my buddy. I really enjoy hiking and live in the mountains, so I'm out in the wild at least twice a week. When I was a few years younger, I decided to leave the house around 4 p.m. and take a trail I was familiar with, just to be out for a couple of hours. Everything looked like it usually did, but something was just wrong. I kept feeling uneasy and sort of out of place, even though I recognized completely where I was. This uneasy feeling started when I entered a valley with exceptionally tall trees. The shrubs all around me were very overgrown, between 3 and 4 feet in height. Deciding I needed a drink, I stopped to get my water bottle out, and that's when I saw it. There was a massive bird sitting in one of these ancient trees, and it was staring off into the distance. This bird was beyond huge. It was dark brown or black, and its feathers were not shiny, they were very mute. I sat down and watched it for approximately 5 minutes before it took off to the west. I still have no idea what kind of bird it was. I've told people, but they think it was just a buzzard. I don't think so at all. I guess I'll never really know. I grew up in a densely forested rural area in central Virginia, and like most kids my age, 10 at the time of this, I spent a lot of time playing in and around the woods. My best friend and I had found a creek one day while exploring different deer trails through the woods. 
This creek we happened on was a very rare find and the perfect spot for us to play. It was wide and deep enough to swim around in and had nice, soft, mossy banks on either side to rest on after we had tired ourselves out. The water was cool and clear, there were no copperheads or mosquitoes because the water was constantly running. We were psyched. After a few hours of swimming, we had to walk back home for lunch, but we made plans to pack lunch the next day so we could have a picnic on the creek banks and spend the whole day there. The next morning we set out for the woods at around 1 p.m., planning to have the picnic first and swim after. We entered at the same spot we had the previous day and followed what we thought was the same deer trail. It was not. At the point where we should have found the creek, we walked into a small clearing that was covered in huge, thick ferns. We had definitely never walked past this before. So, being both hungry and tired of walking, we decided to eat in the clearing. We laughed and played around there for a while, spitting watermelon seeds at each other from our lunch. It was an absolute blast, and we were both in wonderful, giddy moods. That all changed, however, as soon as we packed up and set back out to find the creek. As we walked in the woods, it started to feel darker and colder. We got skittish, and I noticed my friend kept whipping her head around to look behind us. After about a half hour of walking, we came up with what looked like an entire overgrown bathroom. Sink, toilet, and bathtub, all sitting together and covered in ivy. It's pretty common to find weird shit like this in the middle of the woods, so we just walked on and made jokes to lighten the mood, calling it Bigfoot's bathroom. After another hour of walking and not seeing anything we recognized, we started to panic. Instead of trying to reach the creek, we were now just trying to find our way back home or out of the woods, at least. I told her we should follow the sun, and eventually we would come up on a road or someone's property where we could find help. She insisted on another way, and we began yelling at each other out of fear and, let's be honest, little girl bossiness. I told her if she thought she was so right, she should just go her way and we would see who got out first, so we split up. Now, as an adult, I fully acknowledge that I was a stubborn brat and also an idiot. The worst possible thing we could have done. Not 10 minutes after splitting up, I began to hear someone walking, maybe 100 feet, behind me. Thinking it was my friend deciding to go my way after all, I slowed down so she can catch up to me. Instead, whatever it was, it matched my pace. I slow down, it slows down. I stop, it stops. This went on for hours. The whole time, I was going back and forth on whether or not it was in my head or if there was really something following me. I picked up a big stick, swung it a few times to make sure it was sturdy if I had to hit someone, and trucked on. As it began to get dark, I came up with something that made my heart sink into my stomach. It was Bigfoot's bathroom. I had just walked in a huge circle for hours, despite being 100% sure I was following the setting sun the entire time. Confused and frustrated, I sat down on a log and just screamed my little heart out while smacking my whoopass stick repeatedly into the ground. As I tried to collect myself, I heard footsteps walking up on me from behind. I called out my friend's name as loud as I could. No answer. Then, after a short pause, the steps began to run towards me. I jumped up and booked it as fast as I could in the opposite direction. As I was sprinting through the darkening woods, I began to hear what I thought were church bells. I looked up to see the darkest, deepest cloud I have even seen in my life. In the middle, it was so black that it was like looking into the night sky, and the dark grey around it seemed to be swirling. It gave me a horrible feeling to look at, almost like the nausea you get when looking through binoculars for too long. What sickened me further is that I realized the sound of the bells was coming through the hole in the cloud. They were deafeningly loud, I mean, really booming out of this thing. When I realized this, I stopped dead in my tracks. I felt a sense of absolute and overwhelming dread that has gone unmatched in all my 24 years on this planet. Something in my head began screaming that if I did not run away from whatever the hell that cloud was, no one would ever see me again. I would be gone. I did not want to run towards the thing chasing behind me either, though, so I made a sharp right and took off away from both. It was now completely dark, and I was running blind through the woods, smacking through branches, wheezing, and tripping every few feet for what seemed like another hour. I smacked into something low and flew over it, hitting the ground so hard that all the air in my lungs was knocked out of me. As I lay there trying to recover, I realized I couldn't hear the bells anymore. Then my eyes adjusted more to the dark, and I realized what had just made me go ass over teeth was an old fence. Grabbing hold of it, I prayed it would lead me to a farm, and sure enough, it did. I walked up over a hill about a mile to the back of the farmhouse, explained what had happened, and the farmer graciously gave me a ride back home. I was covered head to toe in scrapes, oozing blood, and more exhausted than I had ever been in my life, but I was finally safe. It was past 9pm when I finally walked through my front door. 
My friend had gotten back shortly after we split and figured I had as well, so I hadn't told anybody I was lost, and my family just figured I was still out after dark, which wasn't uncommon for me. They were shocked when I walked in, beat up, and started crying. Nobody had been looking for me at all. To this day, I wonder how long they would have waited to come find me if I hadn't been lucky enough to find the fence and if it would have been too late. My cousin and I were out in the woods behind her house, and we were just messing around. We thought that we would try our hand at making one of those cheesy horror series, so we both started recording on our phones. Well, as it was starting to get dark, the two of us decided to separate for plot purposes, and when she got to this clearing area, she was supposed to scream. So she takes off running as planned, and I'm trying to catch up with her. Well, then I actually got lost. I couldn't find the trail that we had come down there on, and I started yelling her name because she wasn't supposed to go far, she should have still been able to hear me, but she doesn't answer. Then I heard her scream, which was planned, and I yelled back, where are you? I can't find the trail. And she yells, I'm on the road. So I'm still lost, and I start texting her, telling her to come back, but she won't answer any of my texts or calls. And right about the time she called back, I had finally found the trail again and was walking down a hill. I told her that I heard her yell that she was on the road and that I was on my way there, and she told me that she didn't say that. I didn't believe her, though. I was like, I heard you say it. Quit messing around. Then I tripped and fell and dropped the phone, and then picked it back up, laughing at my klutz self, and she asked me, who was that? And she said that she heard a man's voice on my end. I never got any proof of that, though. At this point, she tells me she's coming back, and it wasn't a few seconds later that she walks over the hill, and we hang up our phones and head back home together. We're just thinking that we got ourselves all worked up because we were trying to film something scary to start with, but here's what we were never able to come up with an explanation for. When we got home, we looked at our recordings. We were still arguing over whether she said she was on the road or not, and we decided that we would just prove it. So in my video, you could hear her scream and then yell, I'm on the road. But in her video, she screams, and it sounds identical to the scream in my video, except she never says anything after. Her video doesn't pick up a voice at all. Even she admitted that it sounded like her voice. Also, in her video, she ran for about 5 minutes straight but never went to the road. And if it took her 5 minutes to run that far, how long should it have taken her to walk back to me? Because she didn't start heading back until I talked to her on the phone and told her that I was lost. Our phone call was only about 120 minutes long, and we didn't hang up until we saw each other. There were just a lot of things we weren't able to explain about that night. Also, she had nightmares for weeks after this about some monster. The description she gives me actually reminds me of a shadowy person, a little, but bigger. Tenkiller Lake is in Oklahoma. This place has many different paranormal stories and legends associated with it, like people jumping into the lake and never resurfacing, ghosts seen walking on the water, etc., so this story is my mom's. My mom and I have a very open dialogue about everything, including relationships and sex. This was probably about 15 years ago. My mom and stepdad had gone to Tenkiller for a few days to get a cheap cabin during the off-season. There was a lot of snow on the ground, and they were probably the only people in the area other than rangers and such. A little setup so you can picture it, the cabin was pretty small. When you first walk in, there's a living room or kitchenette. If you walk across the cabin, to the right of the kitchenette, there's a short hallway with a tiny bathroom off to the right and a bedroom at the end. So my mom and stepdad were in the bedroom, messing around. He had tied her wrists to the headboard, and they were doing their thing when they heard a large crash coming from the living room. They both leaned over and looked down the hallway to see this massive wolf-like creature standing on its hind legs and looking just as surprised to see them as they were to see it. It was so tall that it was kind of bent over to be able to stand inside the cabin. All of a sudden, it growled and started to bound down the hallway towards them, turning into the bathroom at the last second. My stepdad jumped up and chased after it. I don't really know what he thought he was going to do if he caught up to it, there was absolute silence for a few minutes, and my mom was pretty sure she was going to either be eaten or starved to death tied to the bed. Then my stepdad came back, looking perplexed, and untied her. He said there was nothing in the bathroom. There was a window in there, but it wasn't even big enough for a child to get through, let alone whatever this was, and even my stepdad couldn't pry it open when he tried. There are a few legends that say werewolves and such can travel through mirrors, so my mom guesses that's what happened. I live in North Texas, near a large wildlife refuge and a lake bigger than my hometown. One night I had a fantastic idea to go down the long gravel road to the dock with a female friend of mine. I'm from Texas, so I usually carry, 
but I opted to leave my gun locked in the glove box by the gate. About 30 yards into the trek, the road was about 200 yards to the dock, I hear an unnerving noise on my left. It was as if the earth itself growled and rumbled at me. I looked around frantically, trying to pinpoint the sound. Nothing. We stood still, waiting for it to resume. Instead, we hear just heavy footsteps, not crashing or rustling like a bear or a pig does, but heavy pacing. I turn to my friend and ask if she wants to go back. She didn't know, but she wanted to get out of there. So we keep on our journey to the dock with the unnatural growling and rumbling following us, coupled with the heavy paces. I'm terrified by this point, instinctively reaching for my right hip to find a blank space where a holster should be. I grab my pocket knife, and I palm it aggressively. The rumbling continues, almost impacting the air with its weight. We hasten our pace, and it matches ours, but it never comes out of the woods to show itself. Finally, arriving at the dock, she sprints out to the edge, and I grab a handful of rocks and go sit beside her. For the next 15 minutes, it circles the area around the dock landing, emanating rumbles and growls. There's nothing we can do, it's dark, I have no firearm, and we can't see it. I call my buddy, who lives 5 minutes away. The rumbling and pacing continues, roughly 30 to 40 yards away from us, but it doesn't step foot on the dock. Finally, I see headlights come up over the trees, and the rumbling fades into darkness. Dennis comes walking down, cradling a rifle, and that was the end of that. Really freaked me out for a couple of days. I lived in eastern Kentucky for my teenage years. Deep in the Appalachian Hills, where everyone lives miles from each other in a tiny town, I wanted to say this because I'm 29 now and it still affects me every month or so. Where we lived so far from the city, we didn't have much to do, so we drove around and went ghost hunting or had sleepovers at friends' houses or parties in the woods. This night was in the middle of July, and I was 17. We decided to visit this abandoned church that the guys were telling us about. Our usual group was three guys and three girls, including me. One of the guys was with his friend, and we never had service to tell him where we were going, so there were just five of us in the car. The abandoned church was in a hollow, far from town and into the hills. You turn right off the main road and drive for about 45 minutes down a one-lane street that curves over creeks and hills until it gets extremely narrow and rural. The guy said once you get over a specific hill, that's when you start feeling odd, like someone is with you. It was also probably around 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. by the time we started driving. The area was hot and humid since it was the middle of July. We were in the car laughing and looking around as our driver took us over the creek and through the woods. After about 30 minutes, we make it to that hill they mentioned, and the car comes to a stop right in the road. They turn the lights off, and we wait and wait. Nothing really happens, which disappointed me, I wanted to see something crazy. Like lights or a demon standing in front of us or something. We decided to keep going to church after a couple minutes of silence and darkness. The guys were telling us about the last time they stopped in that spot, apparently, they had a big commotion and thought it would recreate itself in the present. We drove about 10 to 15 minutes more down this tight road between the mountains, and finally, slowly around a curve, the hills opened up into this clearing with tall grass. It was probably around 1 or 2 acres of field. On the far left of the property was a two-story stone building that was clearly a church, sitting in the dark. I couldn't stop staring at it. There were trailers in the next field with lights and cars, so it wasn't 100% desolate. I was so excited to see something. I searched the windows, convincing my eyes I might see a little figure peeking through the darkness, but I had nothing. We parked on this concrete lot area right off the road and got out. The guys convince us to hike through the grass to the building, and we go happily. The first story was the basement, and the second was the church itself. The guys led us to the steps that went to the second story through the front doors. I don't remember if we were inside or still standing outside, but our sixth friend pulled up about 10 minutes after us. He said he couldn't get a hold of us where there was no service anywhere. He said someone wrote the initials of the street where the church was located in the dirt of his car window, BF, and decided to see it, and luckily his hunch was right. We all go in at this point. This was a Southern Baptist type of church, the sanctuary had all the windows broken out. There was a raised stage area where the preacher probably stood with a podium. The pews were all gone, so it was an open room with a back corner closet to the left of the stage and a small door with stairs to the basement on the right of the stage. There were a couple dead birds laying about the large room. I took it as a bad omen. I'm superstitious in general and Arab. I immediately thought about jinn. My dad said they hide in abandoned places. I never asked for permission to go in either. The guys all go into the basement by themselves, and three girls stay upstairs to do some ghost hunting. We have our phones as recorders, and we wanted to catch voices. I sit on the stage, 
the side closer to the closet in the corner. Our more scared girlfriend sat in the middle. They ask the usual, what's your name? Who are you? And we have silence as our answer. I get this feeling of cockiness washing over, it is not who I am in general to feel that way, and I can't explain why. I knew better, even at 17, than to challenge things I didn't understand. I begin with, I don't believe anything is here, why don't you knock on something? Make a sound, do something? We hear a knock. My friend says, it's going to follow you home if you don't be careful, and I brush her off. The closet I'm sitting nearest to starts making some subtle sounds, the dead leaves inside are shuffling quietly. We move together, terrified and bracing ourselves. We hear steps from the front doorway of the church and then steps from the closet. I feel a cold wind, and the steps from the door start running to us while progressively stomping. All three of us are screaming, the guys run upstairs, and we all meet up again. I don't know why we didn't just run out of the building, but we eventually got back to the cars. One friend said he heard a chorus of people singing from downstairs, and one of the girls said they heard a piano while we were regrouping upstairs. We get back to the car and make our way home. The next night I'm home, in my room, safe asleep. I dream of a huge black figure with claws coming through our closed front door. It stomps up the steps the same way we heard in the church, into my room. It slams my door open, shoving the doorknob into the wall and damaging it. It comes up to me being asleep, unable to wake up or move, and shoves me out of bed. I wake up on the floor, and the door is embedded into the wall. My first sleep paralysis dream. I've had them since, dreams of this thing finding me. Standing and staring at me, shooting its hand into my body and dragging out my organs all while I can't move or scream. It's been years, and the dreams are not as common anymore. I never went back into that building because I truly believe whatever it was did follow me home. We of course went back to the church constantly, it became popular. I would wait in my car or whoever's vehicle took us each time. I would see friends go back in and run out with children chasing behind them in the grass when we didn't have kids with the group. I've seen eyes in my rearview mirror while leaving the hollow. I have seen my long hair being pulled in the car while I waited or even sitting at home after visiting. I've had paralysis dreams since then, and I believe it was whatever was there that started them. Never going back in. At the time this happened, I lived in a cabin in the woods, and my parents lived in a RV next to it. I have a short 20 meter walk from their door to mine. So it is nighttime, and I have a military grade flashlight with me because I've been getting spooked on my short walk home. I'm pointing the flashlight around, and for a split second, it flashes over this creature. I shine the light back at it for another split second before dropping the flashlight, falling back on my ass in terror because the creature lunged at me before turning around and running into something where it disappeared. It looked like it ran into an invisible portal, a wall, or something. Keep in mind that this all happened within a second or two. I booked it back to my mom screaming that I'd seen a demon. It was about 25 feet away from me, and it was short, like maybe around 4 feet 10 inches. It was wet and had this stringy, greasy black hair. It was blue, but sort of like an oil slick type blue, whatever material it was covered in was giving off the blue sheen. I didn't see its legs, but they were short. Its head was large. I'm terrified of the dark now, and I'd just like to get a restful night's sleep. I lived close to my high school when I was that age, and luckily for me, there was a bike path that led straight to it. I would either walk or ride my bike to school all the time, except in winter when it would be too snowy to take. This path started at one of the city parks, and it went right by the biggest cemetery in town. The path cut through a nature preserve, which was mainly wetlands, but there was a forest that went from the cemetery past the school until it hit some farms. I would oftentimes go to this nature preserve and just walk around because it's quiet and pretty, especially in the fall when the wetlands turn brown and the trees change color and lose their leaves. There is a walking path that goes from the bike path around the wetlands and follows the edge of the forest for a while before heading back to the bike path again, and that was my favorite section to walk by. Okay, I set the scene now for the story. It was November, I remember, because the leaves had all fallen and it was frosty. I had a stressful day or week because of some small high school occurrence, so I needed some time by myself. I headed to the preserve, and I walked on the path that took me through the woods. It was on the weekend in the late afternoon and overcast, a perfect day to be moody. I decided to go into the woods, which I hadn't done before, because I didn't want to get lost or get ticks. It seemed late enough in the year that the ticks and underbrush had all died, so I shouldn't get ticks or lose them. I went straight in, and it was really nice and pretty. Eventually I lost sight of the wetlands and the path and happened upon a fallen tree. I hopped up on it and laid down, closing my eyes to listen to the sounds of the wind whipping through the woods and the occasional bird. 
I must have been in a meditative trance because when I opened my eyes again, the sun was setting and it had gotten much colder. I had come to awareness because I couldn't hear any animals or wind, not even a gentle breeze. It was totally silent and still. I was freaked out by that, and in fact, the sun was setting and I was deep in the woods, so I hopped down and set off for the wetlands. As I walked, I got a text message, so I stopped walking to read it. When I stopped walking, I heard leaves rustle behind me, then silence. I was immediately on edge, so I started walking again. After walking for a bit, I suddenly stopped, and again, I heard another crunch of the leaves. This is when my heart rate increased. I start walking again, and then one more time I stop, only this time I look behind me. It had gotten darker quicker than I expected, and it was twilight. There was no color, and I could only see shapes. When I looked back, I saw a shape jerk behind a tree, but I noticed that the shape seemed red. I don't think the entire thing was red, but with it being twilight and it moving so quickly to hide, it appeared all red. That was too much, and I took off running for the wetlands as fast as I could without looking back. Finally, I saw the edge of the woods, and I ran even faster. Breaking out of the woods, I booked it home as fast as I could. I didn't look behind me, and I don't recall hearing anything but the blood pumping in my ears. I don't know what happened, and it seems like it isn't much, but I didn't go back in the woods unless I was with someone else and never when it was close to the evening. Utah, I went up with a group of friends to spend the weekend rock climbing and fishing. As we were driving back from our campsite, my buddy suggested that we check out a community art project called the Fairy Garden, located in a massive river drainage system. My friend and I decided to see how long the place stretched on, so we began to hike out in one direction. The whole place was huge, we must have walked a mile, and we were still seeing these rocks that people had painted and put out. The trees looked much weirder at this point, they were all very thin and arranged in an almost perfect grid. I realized that my friend had wandered off from me, so I began to call out his name. I began to hear somebody calling my name from behind me, but it sounded too distant to allow me to tell if it was my friend or not. I turned and began to walk towards the sound when I heard somebody running up to me from behind me again. It was my friend, who had heard me calling, who ran over. I was pretty freaked out, but I still think that this could have been me working myself up because I was in the woods. The second day, we are fishing after a day of climbing, and I'm not getting any luck, so I decide to take a loop around the lake with my dog. I get to the other side of the lake. My dog freezes, turns to look uphill, and starts whining. My initial guess was a bear, so I told my dog to sit and began to hike up the hill. I reached a cliff with a very easy staircase-like feature on it, and I scrambled over it to see what was above it. I was in a boulder field with a lot of very cool rock features and stuff. I began to look around, and I determined that whatever had spooked my dog wasn't nearby. I noticed what looked like a dark figure behind a tree about 30 feet ahead of me, and I quickly freaked out and turned to get back to my friends. As I was down climbing the section I had climbed up, I began to hear my name being called again, very distant and not obviously male or female. Suddenly, a bit of rock I was hoxelding onto rips off, sending me on a good three-foot fall, and then rolling me about ten feet down a hill. Besides scrapes and bruises, I was okay, so I quickly got up to continue on. I heard my name being called, this time it sounded much louder, and I could feel anger and hostility in the voice. The voices stopped promptly when I got back with my friends. The dog was on edge and jumpy for the rest of the trip, and that was what really made me wonder what was going on, since my dog is usually never scared of things like this. I definitely think that there is some weird stuff going on in those mountains. I know there are some pretty good explanations for what I've experienced, but it just felt very wrong to me. So I have had a series of what could best be described as supernatural encounters over the past few months. It began when I went home to New England for Thanksgiving, and I've experienced several more events recently that led me to believe I encountered something significant. All of these events took place on a forest reservation that I spent a lot of time on as a kid. It is a young, rocky forest that was previously a quarry and logging area for New England colonists. There were rumors in this forest. Stories of cults, chanting, and strange noises I assumed it was just high school nonsense until recently. The first encounter I had was at night, around 10 p.m., the day after Thanksgiving. It was dark, but I was used to it, and I had my dog with me. I was at my favorite park for meditation the ruins of a fire tower on the rocky hill where the wetlands turn into proper forest. I saw lights, not from flashlights but from fire. Glowing orbs are moving through the trail down the hill. At least ten hooded individuals with torches were marching silently away from me. I've never run so quickly in my life. I was back on the trail through the wetlands, slipping in the mud, trying to get away as quickly as possible. My dog was no help at all, 
He kept refusing to move on and whimpered whenever I pulled him. This was where SHT got real. It was the second time in my life that I felt like I was going to die. Screaming, inhuman, high-pitched screeching from the bushes all around me the bushes were rustling, my dog cowered under my legs, and the wind picked up. It got louder and louder until I couldn't hear. I picked up my dog, a mud-covered 50-pound coonhound, which wasn't fun, and just ran until I was out of the forest and back to my house. I couldn't sleep that night or for the rest of my time home in November. The next encounter happened just before Christmas. I decided to go back to the forest, with my dog, of course. Although this time I went early in the morning so I could get a long walk in, strangely enough, I wasn't nervous, I felt welcomed into the forest. I love deer tracking in the winter, my dog loves it too, although Hess shit at it. I like to get as close as I can and just watch. I was off trail for some time before finding a herd. I followed a male who had broken off from the herd for around 20 minutes. I lost him behind a rock and rushed a bit forward to catch him, but I tripped up, and he sprinted away. I went behind the rock, there were some thick bushes behind it, and I was surprised to see a pair of huge antlers inside the bush. What I thought was a deer moved towards me, but when I saw its face, I froze. Not a deer, really, but not anything recognizable, not anything I could really comprehend. The closest I can get to describing it is that it is human, but uncanny and wrong, if that makes any sense. Its two yellow eyes are still burned into my mind. And then it was over, gone, and disappeared as soon as I blinked. My dog was calm through this, almost bored by it. And I can't really say that I was scared by it. I felt comforted, if a little uneasy and confused. I spent the rest of the day trying to get out of the woods. I was hopelessly lost and ended up in a part of the forest I had never been to. I ended up walking out of a neighboring town and then Ubering back home.